On the subject of the spread of COVID-19 in Alberta, I want to get to another uh, very important point, and that is that meat processing plants in Canada, but especially that province, have been hit hard by the virus. More than 900 employees at just one plant in southern Alberta have been infected. There have been other outbreaks at plants in Alberta, as well as in B.C., Ontario and Quebec. It's not just the employees at risk, though. The union representing employees at the Canadian Food Inspection Agency says 40 meat inspectors have contracted COVID-19 across the country, 21 in Alberta alone. And while inspectors continue to fall ill, the union says the federal government is threatening disciplinary action against employees who refuse to be reassigned to work at COVID-19 infected meat plants. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says it's a balancing act between ensuring the food supply continues to flow and protecting workers safety so is that answer good enough what exactly is being done to protect these inspectors fabian murphy is the national president of the agriculture union which represents canada's food inspectors he joins us from ottawa hi mr murphy good to see you good to see you too hi thank you very much for being with us uh, let me just get you first on the number of of inspectors who have been infected i first saw the information from senator paula simons on her twitter account it, it, does that number still stand at 40 has it increased uh, have people recovered what can you tell us well, uh, the, the number of 40 is a running total, and uh, that was the number up to yesterday. Obviously, some of those people have recovered and actually have gone back to work. So, um, but with, with that, we you know we still we still see that uh, we're not being able to control the outbreak in the meat plants. Uh, so, when somebody goes to work uh, in the morning, uh, you know they're pretty much dealing with an invisible hazard that. Uh, we they, they have no uh, they have no idea if it's going to be controlled and if uh, whether or not they're going to contract that. And how many inspectors or, or is there sort of a way to qualify how many of them ha are, are worried they might have it because of contact with people who uh, were diagnosed and maybe haven't officially been uh, tested positive for it, but are self isolating, for example? Yeah, that would be a difficult question to answer. I think we're all concerned, you know, whenever, whenever we leave our, our house and where we feel very safe, I think we're all concerned that uh, we may come in contact with somebody that's COVID positive. Uh, as we know that the uh, you could be asymptomatic and, and still, uh, you know, test positive for COVID-19. So when you go to work in the, in the morning and, uh, you know, you show up for work, you, th you expect to be able to return home safely, um, you know, the same way that you left your house that morning. Uh, but not everybody um, is that lucky, unfortunately. So uh, let me just drill down on the situation in Alberta at Cargill because workers did are back at work, some of them, a, a bunch of them. Uh, the plant has at least reopened. And I'm wondering what, what is the level of activity for inspectors there? Well, my understanding is the plant has really slowed down the process lines there. I believe they're only running one shift now, so there would be less inspectors in that plant. Uh, so they're being very, very cautious, and uh, and I think that's acceptable. Uh, we need to be able to show that we can control the spread of COVID-19. And uh, so if, if plants are able to operate that way, then we certainly wouldn't have any issue with that. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, you, you, you know, this is an invisible hazard. We have no idea uh, if it's going to be, if somebody's going to walk into the plant and uh, be, um, you know, uh, a carrier of COVID-19. So, you know, you have to protect yourself at all time when you're in these industrialized environments. There's a lot of uh, moisture in the air. There's lots of air circulation. Uh, folks are working in close proximity to each other. Uh, it's it's not always possible to maintain that social distance of six feet. Um, so when that, you know, in those situations, uh, you know, you have to make sure that you provide all, as much protection as possible. And, uh, you know, what we're seeing right now is, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the employer hasn't been able to provide uh, adequate personal protective equipment, which I consider is an N95 respirator. I know they're in short supply, um, you know, uh, so, but having said that, under normal circumstances, when our folks that uh, work with CFIA, if they're faced with a hazard in the workplace, uh, similar to uh, COVID-19, another biological hazard, uh, they would certainly be issued those those respirators here. Yeah, I want to uh, ask, can I ask you sorry, yeah. so just specifically about the equipment? Because I, I just want to um, sort of position it against what we've heard from the CFI IA, which is that that they are providing this is what they say they're providing personal protective equipment masks and face shields for meat inspectors working in federally licensed slaughter establishments and you're saying that you think uh, and, and please correct me if i'm wrong but that those inspectors should be equipped with n95 respirators well you know uh 
the, the face masks that they're providing right now are not personal protective equipment. So they're, they're cloth masks or paper masks. So the face shield is certainly considered personal protective equipment, but uh, there's no dispute that a, uh, a cloth face mask does not protect you from contracting COVID-19. I mean, the public health agency will say that, uh, the Center for Disease Control in the United States will say that there's no argument there. Uh, the, the, the issue is that uh, the uh, the agency has not been able to uh, to procure these N95 masks, so that's why they're not being provided. Now, if you look at uh, when when uh, we have an when we have a hazard in the workplace, such as you know this biological hazard, and we do our hazard assessment, uh, that hazard assessment tells us what protective measures should be implemented in order to protect the worker against the hazard. And uh, under normal circumstances, you know, personal protective equipment, adequate personal protective equipment, such as a respirator in this case, would normally be provided. Uh, we're not seeing that in this situation. And uh, in you, and normally what, we, what would happen is that if you can't provide that protection against the, uh, the hazard to the worker, then you wouldn't assign the worker those duties. So, so is that what you're asking of the federal government? If they can't provide respirators, then inspectors shouldn't be going into these facilities? What we're asking is that the employer uh, ensure that the workplace is safe for our members going in there. And if they can't do that, then they should be looking at uh, shutting down those plants uh, until we can ensure that the workers that are in there are safe. But just so that I'm clear, uh, Mr. Murphy, by safe, do you mean supplied with the PPE that, that you say is necessary, which is an N95 respirator? Well, unless we can guarantee that there's no hazard in there, then you have to provide the, the, the right protections. Uh, the mechanical barriers that they put in place, they help. The face shields that they've been providing, they help. Uh, the face coverings, even, they help to a certain degree. But we, we've even seen plants that have put all of those measures in place, such as the one recently in Quebec. Um, despite that, they, they still had an outbreak there. And so I, I guess I, I wonder what you would say uh, to the federal government who, and, and I take your point on safety very much, and, and in no way would anyone want those inspectors to uh, be risking contracting this virus. And I, mm -hmm. and I take the point that it's very difficult to know about since it, since it is so invisible to a certain degree. But there is, of course, the concern around food supply, around food safety right now in this country, really everywhere around the world. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you balance, I, you know, I, I sort of, I can, I can see from the federal government's perspective, you got to balance out, uh, of course, the concerns around safety, but also with the need for people to have safe food. No, and I certainly appreciate that, and we certainly need to have safe food for Canadians to eat there. Um, you know, we need to look at how we can do that and how we can provide that food safely. Not all plants have outbreaks right now. There are still plants that are operating that have never had those outbreaks. It's, you know, it seems to be, unfortunately, the larger plants that are having trouble controlling that. We've seen plants that had an outbreak and they took uh, very proactive measures. They shut down right away. Uh, they provided that 14 day incubation period. So when they reopened, uh, they were pretty confident that the people that went back in there uh, had, you know, they, they probably weren't carriers of COVID-19. And it seems that those plants were able to, to continue to operate safely. Okay, I'll leave it there, Mr. Murphy. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Fabian Murphy is the national president of the Agricultural Union, which represents inspectors with the CFIA. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.